I invite you to stand. The Spirit of the Lord has filled the whole world, and that which contains all things understands what is said. Alleluia. Wisdom chapter 1, verse 7. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin to celebrate these sacred mysteries on Pentecost Sunday, we um, recognize that we mentioned, we mentioned this last weekend, that because of the ascension, um, the Lord God gets to be present to us at all times and all places. He's not localized to a particular time, a particular place. And the same thing is true when it comes to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that he gave to us. Remember Jesus said, unless I ascend to my Father, I can't, can't send the Advocate, can't send the Holy Spirit. But Christ truly has ascended to his Father. He intercedes for us, lives to intercede for us, and he sends his Holy Spirit upon all those who ask. So as we begin this, to celebrate this, uh, the sacrifice of the Mass, we also ask the Lord to send his Holy Spirit of mercy, Holy Spirit of, of strength and of power, so that we can worship him the way that God deserves on this Pentecost Sunday. So we pray. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. You lived to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, Amen. and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church and every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a, a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each one of us, each of us, hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Alamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Responsorial Psalm. Lord, send out your spirit 
and renew the face of the earth. Lord, Lord send, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are great indeed. How manifold are your works, O Lord! The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in his works, pleasing to him by my theme. I will be glad in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. If you take away their breath, they perish and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one through its many parts, and all the parts of the body through many are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wait, you have a seat. So um, sometimes we do these like icebreaker questions and uh, I've mentioned it before. I think I might have even mentioned this icebreaker question in the past. It's one of my favorites because it, it comes up. I probably ask it of people multiple times a year. But the question is this. Um, if you could have any superpower, what superpower would you have? And most people, there are some people who are thoughtful. Most people are just like, oh, I'd like to fly. And then someone says teleport. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I'd rather teleport. Like, I don't know. I have been... Again, I might have mentioned this before, but flight makes sense. Teleportation makes complete sense. Um, someone who says, I want to be able to breathe underwater. All those things, so cool. Um, the number of people who have said they want to be invisible is disturbing to me. Just because I'm like, what do you want? Hmm, what do you want to do with that? Like, I don't know what, what that is. No, I remember saying that at one point, someone says, sometimes people just don't want to be seen. They want to be, I was like, okay, that's the thing, but why would you have a superpower to not be seen? Like, you could fly away or teleport somewhere else. Anyways, <laughs> the question, um, the answer I always have is, uh, I think it's probably the most thoughtful answer I've ever heard, um, my own answer. But uh, <laughs> because someone could say, I want to fly. and say, okay, great, you mean hover, like float? Or like how fast? And I would say, well, how about the speed of light? I want to be able to fly at the speed of light. But if that's the case, then I need to also uh, be invulnerable because there's debris in the air. There's also friction. And so I need to be invulnerable. Also, uh, I need to have really quick reflexes because it doesn't do any good to fly really fast but not be able to turn fast enough. So you have to have that. Also, um, you need to have sight that can see really far because um, 
I mean, for many reasons, but one is you need to see what's coming, that kind of thing. Also, you should probably be able to uh, not to be able to go without oxygen, like live in space kind of a situation because there else you'll just be doing laps around the earth and that's kind of get boring after a while, I think. Also, because of that, you should be able to handle extreme cold because the depth and heat, because the depths of space has both heat and cold. Um, also, you don't just want to be able to fly up to like, here's a burning building, you flew there. But now I can't help you because I'm not strong enough. You need super strength as well. So basically, all of those things go to say, I want to have the superpowers of Superman. <laughs> basically, that's it's all wrapped up in him. Um, it's interesting though, to go back to this. The question is, I would say, I'd be Superman. The question wasn't, what superhero would you be? The question is, what superpowers would you have? Here is something that just strikes me again and again, every time I think about this. Because if through a, some freak of accident or through a gift of the Holy Spirit, gift of the Lord, I was given superpowers or you were given superpowers, you wouldn't become Wonder Woman. You wouldn't become The Flash. You wouldn't become Batman, or he's a human being. You wouldn't become Superman. You'd be you with powers. So you wouldn't actually be the superhero. I wouldn't be Superman. I would be me with Superman's powers. And that's a huge difference. When I was in high school, it was my time to be, to be confirmed. And so Pentecost, you know, just coming to an 11th grader. And, uh, and they told us about the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. These seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, of wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, prudence, fear of the Lord, piety, fear of the Lord, um, fortitude, last one. And I remember they said to get, pick one, just get to pick one of the spiritual superpowers. And I remember asking, can I have all of them? Because even then I wanted the Superman. You know, and they said, yeah, go ahead, go pray for all of them. There's something fascinating about that though. Here I am asking God on the day of my confirmation and many days thereafter, many years, in fact, here we are even now, praying for those gifts. And my problem is, am I waiting for God to give me supernatural gifts without being willing to use the natural gifts he's already given? Because again, maybe I was given, you're given the powers of Wonder Woman or of uh, the Hulk or of Superman, whoever it is, I would still be my selfish me. I would still be my I can't be bothered me. I would still just be me. So those superheroes are superheroes for a reason. It's not because of their powers, it's because of what they do with those powers. And the same thing is true when it comes to us. St. Paul is writing in the second reading today and he says, to each the spirit has been given for some benefit. And I know for myself, I'm like, oh yeah, I want these powers, I want these gifts, I want these supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be amazing to be able to do miracles, to be able to speak in tongues, to be able to interpret tongues, to be able to do mighty works. But Paul says, no, to each those spiritual gifts are given for some benefit to build up the church. They're kingdom gifts. They're not personal gifts to make me holier. They're kingdom gifts to build up the kingdom. They're gifts that are given not just to be possessed. They're gifts that are given to be used. You know, uh, Pope Paul VI, back in the 1960s, he wrote about how the church has to be missionary. In fact, in fact, he says something along the lines of, he says, to the degree that the church is missionary, she is the church. And to the degree that the church is not missionary, she's not the church. To the degree that we are willing to go out and, and take care of those who are, no one else takes care of, to the degree that we're willing to go out and bring the gospel, the good news to people, to the degree that we're willing to go out and bring the sacraments to people, that's the degree to which we really are the church. These are gifts that have been given to us. The question is, are we using those gifts? Am I a disciple? Am I a missionary? I remember uh, years ago hearing this definition of a disciple, um, or at least a metric of a disciple. What's a disciple? A disciple is someone who's willing to change their own schedule in order to get closer to Jesus. And that was really clear, helpful for me because it, 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 it solidified some things. A disciple is someone who's willing to change their own schedule in order to get closer to Jesus. But a disciple maker, like a missionary, is someone who's willing to change their own schedule in order to help someone else get closer to Jesus. And that's where I just all of a sudden realized, okay, there might be a lack. I might be, I might be constantly asking God for these supernatural gifts and he's constantly asking me, okay, great, that's wonderful. I want to bestow my gifts upon my children. I love you very much. Question, what are you doing with the natural gifts I've given you? Because that's the question for all of us. You know, um, in fact, 
we keep talking about mission so much on campus here that's just like every disciple has to be a missionary, right? To change my schedule, to get closer to Jesus, but also be willing to change my schedule to help someone else, help someone else get closer to Jesus. But so often we fail, right? In, in that, that moment of being a missionary, we fail. And a lot of times, and I'm talking to students and they, they come back and they're saying, okay, hey, here's the situation. Whether it's like someone was talking about the church and they were bashing it, or I was in class and the teacher was saying this or that, and, or, or here's an opportunity for me to, to witness, to share, to help, and I didn't do it. It was my opportunity to help someone, to really serve them, and I didn't do it, and I'm a failure. I'm like, okay, well, maybe you're a failure. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but let's, rather than just like short circuit that, rather than just like disqualify yourself, let's ask the question, what were you missing? Because a lot of times, I know for myself, when, I'm, when I fail to be that disciple of Jesus, when I fail to be the missionary, when I fail to use the gifts, I'm lacking something. Maybe I'm lacking more than one thing, but at least one of these three things. I'm either lacking wisdom, I'm lacking courage, or I'm lacking love. I think every one of us, when we fail to be missionaries, when we fail to take the gifts that God has given to us and use them, it's because I lack wisdom, like I don't know what to do. Here I'm in class and my teacher is going on and on about the Catholic Church, There's bashing this about this or that about Jesus. And like, I didn't say anything, why? Because I didn't know what to say. Here's someone sitting on the side of the road and I wanted to help them, but I didn't act, why? Maybe, maybe it's because I didn't know what to do, I lacked wisdom. That's important to make a distinction between lacking wisdom and lacking courage. Because courage could be something like, well, I know what to do, I know what to say, but I'm afraid of what people will think. I know what to do, I know what to, how to help, but I'm afraid of the ramifications. I'm afraid of where this will, where this will take me. I'm, again, afraid of others' opinions. I'm afraid of what this means. So lacking wisdom, I need more experience. But maybe I know exactly what to do and I fail to do it and I'm, I'm merely lacking courage. I think in both of those situations, I think there's something really good. I was talking to my, uh, Father Josh Johnson just the other day, uh, well, actually a while ago, and we were talking about this, what it is to be a missionary. And I mentioned those three things that oftentimes we have this lack of, lack of wisdom, this lack of courage or lack of love. We'll get to that in a second. And he pointed out, he said, yeah, you know, it's so fascinating that even the night of their ordination to be priests, the apostles, they have the Last Supper. They're given this gift of the Holy Spirit. They're made priests. And then what does Jesus ask them to do? He asks them to watch and pray with me. And there's something about that, like stay with me and watch and pray with me that it meant to make up for our lack of wisdom because I'm with the Lord. And so he reminds me of the truth. It's meant to make up for our lack of courage because I'm with the Lord and he's the one who's strong. But it's also meant to make up for our lack of love because there are some times when, you know, I, I know the right thing to do, or at least I can guess. I, I have the courage to do it, but I'm lacking that third piece. I'm lacking love, meaning I'm just not willing to do it. Not because I'm afraid of anything, not because I'm afraid of anyone's opinion. I just can't be bothered. And how many of us would be, how many of y'all would be incredible missionaries of the Lord if it, was, if it wasn't for that? How many would there actually be superhero saints in the church right now? Because you have all the knowledge you need. You have all the wisdom you need. You have all the courage you need. You don't care what people think, but that third piece, so I'm just, can't be bothered. I mean, I could think about any of the people in the comic books, those comic, comic book movies. Why are they superheroes? Not because of their superpowers, but because whatever strength they have, whatever gifts they have, they're willing to use them. They're available. And that's, I think, the key. I think the superpower of any superhero, more than anything else, is that they're available. I think the thing that marks the difference between most of us and those incredible saints is not an abundance of gifts. It's not they have more Holy Spirit. It's not they have more supernatural gifts. It's simply this one thing. They've made themselves available. So we have FOCUS on our campus um, for the last number of years. And FOCUS stands for Fellowship of Catholic University Students. They love their ac ac acronyms. They love their acronyms. And so one of the first acronyms I learned from FOCUS was the acronym FACT. The, and it st stands for faithful, available, contagious, and teachable. That, that if you invite someone into discipleship, they should have these four marks, these four kind of qualities about themselves. They're faithful, so they, you know, they want to strive after the Lord. doesn't mean perfect, but they strive after the Lord. They're available, 
they're available. They're contagious in that sense of like, um, you know, they're not off-putting, that people like being around them, and they're teachable. They, they're open, they're docile, right? They're open to being taught, they're open to being led, open to being discipled. And so we have so many students who fit that, fit, fit that description. But I had to learn the hard way um, because before Focus got here, I just learned these things. I'm like, well, I'll just do them here by myself without any Focus missionaries here. And I found so many people who were freaked. They were faithful, they were faithful, they were contagious, they were teachable, but they just weren't available. And I beat my head against the wall trying to convince these guys and these gals like, no, here's what you want to do. And they say, yeah, Father, we want to do that thing, but I just don't have the time. I just don't have the availability. I'm just, just not there. And it's remarkable, because they're still blessed. They're still gifted. They're still incredible people. They're good people. But the difference between someone who's gifted, the difference between someone who's blessed, and the difference between someone who's a gift, who is a blessing, is that one word, is that one trait. The difference between someone with superpowers and a superhero is who's available. It's too often, too often, we aren't even beginning to use the natural gifts God has given us. And yet we keep coming back to him and saying, God, give me supernatural gifts, give me even more. Um, so not too long, a couple months ago, my computer just went on the fritz. It was just, it was old, it was over a decade old and we made it that far, I'm proud of it. Um, but then it, it just it went down. And so I'm online and I'm looking at all these things and you don't realize, like you, you can have your base computer, but you know, for a couple hundred dollars more, you have more RAM. A couple hundred dollars more, you have more memory. You have more processing, all these kind of things, all these extra core, whatever. And I was like, wow, that adds up really quickly. So I called my cousin, because my cousin, he built computers for his living. That's what he does for his job. I'm like, hey, Mikey, what do I need when it comes to my computer? And he says, what do you use it for? <laughs> I'm like, well, um, I surf the internet and I write things. <laughs> so he's like, okay, so you need a web browser and a word processor. Yeah, so basically a typewriter with an iPhone. Like basically, that's kind of what my computer is. And he says, you don't need all those things. Like, in fact, the old computer that I had, I probably didn't use three, three quarters of what it was capable of, use, of, of, of doing. I probably used only less than even one quarter of what my computer is capable of doing. But I want to get this, but I want more. I want this new one that has even more processing, even more memory, even more all these things. But if I'm not using the power I have, why should God give me any more? Why should I pay for any more? All that power, all the gift wasted, I, remember I was reflecting on this when it comes to like the sun too, kind of a, another analogy. As you know, the sun is a sphere, right? So it's round all the way around. It's like a basketball because <laughs> those, those uh, liberal arts majors. So it just gets, it's, a, it's a, all the way around. Um, <laughs> which means that the entire sun, like coming off of it, is all of the heat, all the energy, all the light. But it's going in all directions, all the time. And here's the, the earth that's just in like a speck, that it's, we're receiving just a speck, a fraction of the heat and the light, the energy coming off of the sun. There have been some scientists who have studied this. They said that if you collected all of the energy of the sun, coming off in all directions, right, for 10 minutes, that would be enough energy to power all life on Earth for more than 5 billion years. In the space of 10 minutes, the energy coming off the sun would be enough to power all human, all, not just human life, all life on Earth for over 5 billion years. That is so much energy just gone to waste. Like maybe a lot of us Christians. Because our lives are full of blessings. Yes, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles, but what did they do? Immediately, they received the power of the Holy Spirit and they went out and used the Holy Spirit. They received the gift of tongues, the gift of prophecy, the gift of preaching, and they went out and they prophesied, and they went out and they preached. They went out and they used the gifts God had given to them. So here I am asking God, God, give me tongues, the gift of tongues. And he could say, okay, Sure, but when was the last time you talked about Jesus in your own language? He's like, God, give me the gift of mighty works. I'm like, okay, great. I will, I'd like to. But when was the last time you used the strength you actually have to help your neighbor? Oh, God, give me the gift of counsel, the gift of wisdom. He's like, okay. But when was the last time you simply just listened to someone who needed a friend? 
we are filled. This church is filled with people who have natural gifts. And God wants to give us supernatural gifts. But we could ask the question, what for? If I'm not willing to use the natural gifts God has given me, why in the world would he give me supernatural gifts? Well, the answer is because he's good and he loves you very much. And he wants you to use both the natural and the supernatural gifts. And this is the last thing. Last weekend at the Feast of the Ascension, the first reading was from Acts chapter 1. And in Acts chapter 1, Jesus promised. He said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses here in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Now, I love this because Jesus basically doesn't say, hey, go to the ends of the earth. He's basically, he essentially says, start here in Jerusalem. Because we can ask the, the question, God, okay, I've got these natural gifts, supernatural gifts. The Holy Spirit's coming upon me. Where do I start? And Jesus tells us where to start. He says, start where you are. Just right, with, right there. With who? The people who are right next to you. People who are right with you. I am so convinced of this. I am so convinced that when it comes to sharing the gospel, when it comes to Christianity, once again, just being able to be on the move, a church to be missionary, that the church will not be missionary through people giving talks. It won't be missionary necessarily through things like YouTube. It'll be a missionary church. People will come to know the gospel through two sources, through family and through friendship. Because of what, what's missing, what is the, the wound in almost every single one of our hearts right now? Is this wound of isolation and loneliness? And the gospel will be proclaimed. The gospel, Jesus Christ, will reign. But the means I believe that he will use to once again get that good news to the world is through family and through friends. And so what do we do? We start in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. We start where we are. Our problem, my problem is, I often look at what I lack. I often look at where I'm not. I often look at the opportunities I don't have. But Jesus is saying, use what you've been given. Start where you are. And put to use what you have. And the world will be saved. And God will be glorified. And right to the stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our Father hears all of our prayers, we now approach him with great confidence. that the Church, in the power of the Spirit, may make the Gospel understandable to people of every race, language, and culture, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the Holy Spirit of peace may unite and reconcile the peoples and nations of earth, bringing an end to war, hatred, and discrimination, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. That the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, may renew the face of the earth and make it a place where the poor are fed, the strangers are welcomed, and the unborn are brought safely to birth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
that each baptized Christian may develop more fully his or her response to all the gifts which the Spirit bestows for the service of the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit, who purifies us of sin and raises the dead, may bring all our departed loved ones into the fullness of God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for vocations here in the Diocese of Duluth and in your diocese as well as we pray. Almighty Father, we beg pray you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families, to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our order and the good of all the Holy Church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed your Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, that as the Church came to birth, opened to all people the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy every land, Every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be made to your, offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your church throughout the world, all the, all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church throughout the world with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, our merciful Father, gathered to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Alleluia. Acts 2, verse 4 and 11. Let us pray. O God, who bestow your heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given her, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. I uh, just, uh, again, more announcements, it, it, Pentecost Sunday, um, this opportunity, just the opportunity to ask the Lord um, today in a specific way to send out his blessings, whatever those blessings would be, but also, like we were talking about earlier, to be able to say, okay, God, you've already have blessed me. How do you want me to use the blessings that you've given me? Um, we're so grateful. Um, as I mentioned, last week we had our new whole crew of like summertime people. Um, so Kayla was with us last week. She's again with us this week here on Pentecost Sunday. Jeff was with us last week. Now it's Marshall. They're very similar. Glasses, tie, <laughs> but different guys. Um, but uh, what an incredible opportunity it is to not only um, pray with you all, the virtual front pew, but also uh, you get to be introduced a little bit by a little bit to some of the people of our community here back in Duluth. Um, please pray for us up here, and we are praying for you wherever you are. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, Et Spes Nostra Salve, Ad Te Clamamus, Exules filii eve, ad te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Heia ergo, advocata nostra, illos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Jesum, Benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, post hoc exilium, o stende, o clemens, o pia, o ducis, virgo Maria. <laughs>